It was poppin' people. We're back with more of the NU Swiss tournament. We got the final undefeated matchup between Taki and Elias Sai. And let's just get right into it. Man. So what we see in this first game is honestly two very, very, very similar teams. I mean, we got <laughs> Fighting Type on each side, Jolteon on each side. We've got a Driftblum on each side. And then you can look at the rest of the Pokemon in pretty similar ways to, you know, Stealth Rocker. Did I even say there's a Cacturn on each side? Because there's a Cacturn on each side too. And then you just got whatever Mon last. You know, maybe it's a Calm Mind Hatcher Mon here, for example. Could be. Maybe, you know, Calm Mind to Dunsparce here. <laughs> These could very well be the exact same teams. Just change up some Pokemon. So let's just get right into this. I don't really like either person's matchup necessarily more than the others. What I will say, though, is... I do think simeon has got a pretty like, nice time here, because knockoff is just so, so, so free. You got Drifblim and Hatchrim. Neither of these mods really love use losing their item. Drifblim can kind of deal with it a bit better this game than usual because of the Hatchrim support with Magic Bounce. So even if Stealth Rock somehow gets upset, it's like, it's always going to be hard to get that for you. You're really going to have to try to let rocks go over you, and even if they do, I mean, just defog them, man. <laughs> and yeah, Berserker versus the Cloth, and we actually see Fake out. So, my first thought here is, this could actually just be Assault Vest, and Togki could be foregoing Stealth Rock entirely on their team. Maybe even running, um, just Stealth Rock to Dunsparce? Not a super common set, but one nonetheless. We see the Fake out here, and this next turn will tell us a lot, as Togki just selects the Iron Head and one-shot the Cloth. And now that I look at this team from Elias, I think I actually remember this from the Finch game. So this is Sub Tauros. This is CM Jolteon. It's like, these two are like eject button, I believe. So <laughs> there we go. Remember the team. So it's like hard offense. And now the Poros comes in. There's going to be a substitute turn. No, actually Jolteon comes out as the U-turn hits. And seeing that really does solidify in my mind at least that this Berserker is Assault Vest. So, that's, that, that is knowledge going forward. Pass comes in, and if Togki remembers the scout, she'll know that these two are both eject button. So I think a knockoff comes here always, because you don't want to let them get that eject button. And it's also pretty nice to knock the um, Tauros' lefties. It's actually a U-turn, which is very interesting in my view. Maybe they just won't, weren't worried about anything that was going to come in after the fact. That could be it. But Blim comes in, this is now going to be a Will-O-Wisp, I assume, here. Air Slash works as well, that's also a lot lower drawback, just in the event that hat, for god knows what reason, comes in. At least you could hit it immediately, Jolteon would come in, but, you know, at this point in the game, it's pretty pretty safe to play around. And Air Slash damage is huge, too, because, yeah, that Tauros cannot get the sub up. And Defog is very, very free here, gives more leverage to everything on Tog's team. And now Cacturn comes in. If this is SD Cacturn, it is a huge threat. And it's just going to be Dark Pulse. Do we see Life Orb? No, we don't. So this could be... On the samples video we did yesterday, I remember we had a Cacturn set that was like... Something with Dark Pulse. It was... Like, what was the set? It was like Least Storm, Dark Pulse, Encore, Spikes. It could be something like that here. Which is honestly, at this point in the game, pretty, pretty scary. So let's see if it's that set, but... Dark Pulse Ego Taurus, I honestly love Cacturn at this point. I think if you're Tog, you just, you just hit this. Just hit it. That is a beautiful play as well. Really, really well done by Tog with the Encore, so we are right. And we see Hat come out, so we're going to see the button. But now Jolteon comes in. The issue, of course, for Elias being that Jolteon is two shot by Utah at 45. And there's just, the team isn't weakened enough. Jolteon's not going to be able to do anything. And so Jolteon's going to Terra Blast twice here. And if Tog needs to, they could always Terra Blast the Cacturn. I don't think you do, because I think Sucker kills you. Okay, well, what do I know, I guess? <laughs> I guess I do the Sucker Punch KO. So, it doesn't matter at all at this point. The Passimian should always be able to clean some combination of you turning around and just bringing in Pokemon. So, Dunsparce is here. Let's see what this mod goes for. The Drifblim revealing Calm Mind, and it's Dragon Tail. So, I might have actually been right about this being Stealth Rock. Yeah, this is probably Stealth Rock to Dunsparce. That's just 
weird moves to be on any other set. I think it could be um Stealth Rock Boom Burst Roost Dragon Tail. They have a pretty functional set there though. So good read on my end. Good read on my end. And now we're just gonna see the little air slashes come out. Now I mean at this point Driftblim's the last one, and because of the terror, it's very easily revenge killed. That was a very easy win for Taki. Wow. That was very straightforward. Elias just really didn't ever get a good chance to do anything. The Tauros, I think, was really caught off guard by Driftlim being Air Slash. I think Elias was maybe just a little bit too content to trade Rock Slide damage for a burn, I guess? Which to me doesn't really make too much sense anyway, because, like, what do you gain from weakening? Maybe Elias was predicting... No, Elias was predicting Defog there. Which, I get it, but on the other hand, even if the Driftblim was just not going to have Air Slash, the Throne of Willow was really big. So, I don't know. I don't think that was a very good play at all. The game just kind of went downhill from there. Yeah, here's game two. And I'll be honest, both these teams are very ugly. Like, what's up with the color coordination? There's just... The color scheme is all off. Oh, disgusting. Um, looking at Tog's team, though. That Bruxish is insane, this game. It's going to wave crash. And it's going to get KOs whenever it wants. <laughs> it's gotta be, like... I don't know. Something on this team's gotta be Terra Water. If your Claw Witzer is your only water resist, that is just not cutting it. Because even something like Vaporeon at that point is pretty hard to deal with, because it's just going to surf repeatedly, and you have no real mon to come in, because... You, you want to go Clawitzer versus Vapo? Okay. I'll Terra Fairy, and you won't do anything. And, I mean, this will be an interesting game for Oricorio. A very cool litmus test here. Can it beat a team that really only has one mon that's going to be somewhat consistently answering it? That being the Muck. Because once that Muck gets a little low, that Quiver Dance is coming, and I think Oricorio could easily clean up from there. So Bruxish lead, of course, because as we said, um, the only thing on this team that resists water is Clawitzer. Very shocked to see a double here from Tog, but also from Elias, because you're going to be too shot by Wave Crash. I mean, no, I'm not shocked to see that, because at the end of the day, you gotta do something. <laughs> you wanna keep Berserker around, probably, to try to force rocks up, but... Oh, that is such a interesting turn. I think Tog's probably scouting for Fake Out, just in case. So, you know what? That's fine. Anyhow, pretty obvious Tog's got a switch there. Chance comes in. U-turn happens. Now they're gonna trade Hazards here. The unfortunate thing for Elias, of course, is that there is a Tox Croak on the other team. So, these Deed Spikes, they're not gonna stay around. And nothing on Talek's team other than Bruxish is even T-Spike weak. Sandaconda's got Jet Skin. has got Natural Cure. You got two mods that don't even touch the ground, and then you got Croak. You know, we see a Drift Limb. Go for a little substitute, and then... Ex what? Okay. So that happened. <laughs> so the Drift Limb has KO'd itself. This Croak wins now. That was the only thing that was kind of scary. As like a check. And even then, it's not the best answer, depending on how lucky Croak wants to be with gunk shots. That can get pretty bad pretty quickly. But it subbed and it exploded. So the only real check now is this Muck. And I'm here to tell you, Muck is not exactly the Croak answer that you want. And I think every time we're going to just see Tog go into the Chansey. I think that's Scarf Clawitzer. 17% looks way too low. Maybe a Scarf Claw Witzer and Abandoned Mabostive. Which doesn't really help Elias that much, because Claw Witzer's... Oh, it's already taken so much damage, yeah, now it's at Sucker Range from Croak, so you can't even have this like, outspeed the Revenge Kill. Chansey comes in, again, we're seeing 16 every time. You cannot convince me this is not Scarf. That is too low of damage. And the Chansey, every time it comes in, just gets to softball and right back up to full. The Claw Witzer is not going to make any progress this game. I'm Super Berserker with a good U-turn. But Bostiff now comes in, which makes me think maybe this is Scarf and that I'm just wrong about the damage. But I... Look, y'all can calculate for yourselves. I'm not going to do that bit video. But very strange. I think no matter what, the Bostiff can just always crunch. I'm going to see Tog going to Croak. Okay, that still feels like low damage. 
But no, it wasn't that looks banded to me. The croak out sped. I mean, speed tie, I guess. Okay, Jolteon comes in. And so long as there is a Chansey on the field, the, the Jolteon will never win. Because Terra's already been used on Clawitzer, so it couldn't be Terra Ghost Jolteon or anything, which would honestly be kind of hard for a <laughs> for Taki to deal with, admittedly. Beyond Croak Sucker, of course. Yeah, I mean, this game at this point is just kind of... Tog's got to slowly win. There's nothing on Elias' team that is a problem. This is just very, very easy. I mean, Dark Pulse flinch Chansey down from 70. I'm sure that would work. <laughs> the Mux could come in. Kana switch in. Yup. Okay, if you you got to make doubles there, but it's not like any double helps because you have Stealth Rock up. <laughs> what are we doubling to, you know? Yep, the Muck Sack. They're going to go probably Clawitzer or Jolteon. Either could come in. Yeah, they got Jolteon. It's not going to help. Yep, now Brux is just going to clean up the Scyfangs. Are we going to see those Scarf Clawitzer? No, I wanted to see the Clawitzer come out and then outspeed Bruxish. Well, that was a game. Um, What do we learn from this? I think what we learned is... Being exotic with your teams is always accepted. But maybe not this exotic. I mean, I don't love the structure as is. Like I said, I just hate how the team looks. And this isn't because the six Pokemon couldn't fit together. I just have a very weird way of building where, for some reason, as I have gone through my Pokemon career, if my team did not look aesthetically pleasing, I was not happy with the team because when I'd use it, it would just lose. Maybe I was getting in my own head, but you know what? I like to believe that aesthetics matter when team building because it means you've got the diversity on your build to not be like overlapping roles or typings too much. And it's not like there's typings and roles overlapped here, it's more just... I don't know, man. Something just looks wrong. <laughs> but, that is not it for this tournament. Of course, we will have more games coming in the future weeks. This just now means Swiss is headed to playoffs, where Togki will have the one seed and presumably a bye in round one. Elias Sai, I think has a good shot to have a buy in round one as well. Given they, you know, did go undefeated up through the tournament. Just not till the very last round. But I hope y'all enjoyed this. Of course, if you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.